Up Mark Lyons forcing the jump ball call. Butler gains possession. Ensuing play. Butler has the ball down one. 20 seconds to go. The ball gets away in the backcourt. The official game clock stops momentarily at 14.7 seconds, then resumes. Willie Beasley would come up and shoot the three, and he misses. The loose ball will be scooped up by Hayward, and he gets the bucket. Butler up 69-68. 1.2 seconds left on the clock, but hold on. Officials come in to review the play. One more look. Our own clock synced with the game clock. The ball gets tipped in the backcourt. The game clock freezes at 14.7 seconds. You'll see it, and the clock resumes. Beasley shoots the three. You'll see. Now watch it. Our game clock is the right time. The three's no good. The loose ball scooped up by Hayward, and he goes up for the lay-in. And when Hayward releases the ball, our clock shows 0.4 seconds to go. So if the official game clock never stops, Hayward does get the shot off in time before it ends. Oh, and look at this. Officials say no more time is left for Xavier. Game over. Xavier coach Chris Mack can't believe the call. He gives it to the refs. Some Xavier players also get in the mix. Butler goes on to win 69-68, a more reserved Mack afterwards. Certainly frustrated, but it's... It's hard to disagree they wouldn't let us look at the monitor. I know, you know, when we go back and I have a chance to watch it on film, I really hope for everybody's sake they got it right. A statement from the Horizon League officials on the end of this one. The game clock erroneously stopped at 14.7 seconds. When we put the stopwatch to see how long the clock had erroneously stopped, 1.3 seconds had elapsed. The shot by the Butler player was released at 1.8 seconds. The ball went through the net at 1.2 seconds, and the clock stopped correctly. Because we lost 1.3 seconds, that time is deducted from the remaining 1.2 seconds, officially ending the game. Got that? Get it? Good. I was uh, 